Dr. Swachla, Scientific Director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Uterine fibroids are growths made up of muscle and tissues from the uterus. They are non-cancerous. Intramural fibroids are the one type of uterine fibroids that are embedded into the uterine wall. They are the most common type of fibroids that are usually diagnosed in women between the ages of 30 to 40, although they can develop at any age. The causes of intramural fibroids are not clearly understood and there are a vast number of treatment options available that can be very successful uh, in removing the growth. So what causes intramural fibroids? The exact cause of intramural fibroids, as I said, are not yet fully understood. However, it has been observed that the growth of these fibroids is influenced by the hormones estrogen and progesterone. This is supported by the fact that fibroids tend to shrink after the onset of menopause in women when the levels of these hormones decrease. It's also important to understand here that there are several risk factors that play a role in fibroid development. These risk factors are family history of fibroids, high body mass index which is BMI or obesity, not having given birth to a child also can be a cause of fibroids, early onset of menstruation in women, late age for menopause, all these causes can be the reason for intramural fibroids. So let's look at the symptoms. It's common for women to have uterine fibroids by the time they reach the age of 50. However, not all women experience symptoms of intramural fibroids, which are a type of uterine fibroids, like I said. Only around 20 to 50% of women with fibroids require treatment for the symptoms. Now, some of these symptoms could include pelvic and lower back pain, heavy and extended menstrual periods that can lead to anemia, bleeding or spotting between periods, feeling heavy or full in the stomach if the fibroids are large. Let's look at the treatment options for intramural fibroids. The approach for treating these intramural fibroids can vary depending on various factors such as their size, number, location and the symptoms that the patient is experiencing. If you have small fibroids that are not causing any symptoms, you may not necessarily need treatment. But if you get regular ultrasound scans done and pelvic examinations by a gynecologist to monitor the fibroids, further complications in the future can be avoided. If you're experiencing pain, discomfort, difficulty with bowel movement or anemia due to excessive bleeding, treatment may be suggested. The intramural fibroid treatment method is decided based on various factors. Like I said, size, number, location of fibroid is a very important factor. Severity of your symptoms is also very important. Now, number of fibroids present is important. Size of the fibroids, location of the fibroid, specific symptoms of intramural fibroid could be also very important. Planning for pregnancy or not is important because then we will think about considering retaining the uterus or not. The treatment options include medications where prescribed drugs can be given for pain and discomfort because of the fibroids and they have to be prescribed definitely by a gynecologist by someone who is authorized to do so. Iron supplements also are given because fibroids could lead to anemia and to bring down the symptoms of anemia supplementation can be given. Birth control options such as pills intrauterine devices, injections, rings are also prescribed for cramps and bleeding. Gonadotrophins are also given. These are gonadotrophin releasing hormones. These are agonists. These medications shrink the fibroids and often used before surgery to make it very easy for the growth to be removed. Surgery is recommended when medicine is not affected or it's not an option and depending on your desire to whether keep the uterus or, or you're planning for pregnancy in future, surgical approach needs to be discussed with your gynecologist. Operations or surgeries include myomectomy. It is a procedure which is uh, done to remove fibroids and there are very different approaches to this uh, myomectomy. It could be a hysteroscopy where Fibroids are cut away using a very thin, flexible surgical tool inserted through the vagina and cervix. Or it could be done through a laparoscopy where the fibroids are reached using a flexible tool inserted through small incisions made in your abdomen. It could be a laparotomy. The fibroid is removed through one large opening made in the uterus. It could be a hysterectomy. This is a procedure where the entire uterus is removed and it is the only way to uh, completely cure fibroids. However, uh, the fibroids have to be long, they have to be located in such a way and it's also very important that you're no longer wishing to become pregnant again. Always remember that. Uterine fibroid embolization is also an option in this procedure. Blood flow to the fibroid is cut off causing it to shrink and lose its mass. It is performed by injecting small particles into the uterine artery to block blood flow. Then there is radiofrequency ablation also 
it is a method that is used to treat smaller fibroids and it's effective treatment and uses microwave energy to heat and destroy the tissue so what you need to basically understand that these fibroids intramural fibroids are non cancerous growths that can occur in the wall of the uterus depending on their symptoms the treatment options are given you should discuss with your gynecologist about monitoring these fibroids regularly if you're not planning or the, you have not been prescribed any intervention however if the symptoms interfere with your daily life treatment options are available to ease them to know more about treatment options and uh, uh, understand more about fibroids please feel free to contact us thank you a lot of effort has gone into making this video please like and subscribe us thank you